Cycling often mixes triumph and tragedy like no other sport. Professionals will tell you there's really nothing that feels better than passing the victory line at the end of a long race, but there's also nothing more painful than a high-speed crash. Not every competition has a happy ending, and in this video, we'll explore the worst crashes in cycling events, some a bit more infamous than others. First up, Jamaluddin Abdu Jabaras crash of 1991. Known as the Tashkent Terror, Abdu was an erratic and frankly terrifying Uzbek sprinter who would quite literally put his head down and cycle as hard as he could. He, along with Alessandro Patacci, Eddie Merckx, and Laurent Jalabert, was the only rider to win the sprint races in all three of the Grand Tours. In an all-out race just a few feet away from the finish line, the Uzbek rider hit a giant soda bottle along the barrier and wiped out so hard that he practically smashed into the pavement. Abdu Jabarov took out a few riders along with him just seconds before finishing the race. That's gotta hurt, both literally and figuratively. In a feel-good moment, Abdu Jabarov's teammates helped him back onto his bike and over the finish line before he was packed into an ambulance. While no one was permanently injured, after this incident, Abdu Jabarov got branded as an aggressive rider who selfishly took matters into his own hands and put others at risk. Up next, Iron William in 1951. In the 1951 edition of Tour de France, Wim Van Est fell prey to one of the most gruesome crashes in the event's history. The rider from the Netherlands was the first from his country to wear the prestigious yellow jersey and the only one to tumble down a ravine filled with rocks while he was wearing it. Sounds painful. Wim had barely ridden the first half of the race when he suddenly veered off the road as a result of a flat tire. He then slipped into the ravine by the side, which was about 70 meters deep. The worst part was the fact that he wasn't even wearing a helmet. He eventually stopped tumbling just a few meters over a steep drop, which not only would have ended the Tour de France, but also his life. The Dutchman suffered no major injury and was pulled back up with the help of spectators, who made a rope out of inner tubes. That's some quick thinking. As he got up, he wanted to continue the race, but was persuaded by those around him to go to the hospital instead. Now, Giuseppe Guarini and the paparazzi. While this crash may not be as savage or bloody, it was still quite shocking to see it play out. During the 1999 Tour de France, cyclist Giuseppe Guarini slammed headfirst into a photographer near the top of Alpe d'Huez. Guarini was closing in, on the biggest win of his career, on the most iconic climb in cycling when a photographer got his timing all wrong and stood a little too long in the cyclist's path. Who, might we add, was coming hot and heavy, headed straight for victory. Guarini ended up hitting him and tumbled to the roadside and the photographer, or shall we say his nemesis, landed right on top of Guarini's bike. There's a flash of limbs here and there as everyone tries to pick themselves up as quickly as they can. Surprisingly enough, the Italian rider promptly got back on his bike with the rest of the pack closing in behind him and luckily managed to win the stage. We guess his adrenaline kicked in when he needed it the most. Moving on to Bernard Hinault's crash of 1985. If you thought Bernard Hinault had nothing left to prove after winning the Tour de France four times, you couldn't be more wrong. He still wanted to make sure the world knew he could win it for the fifth time in a row. Where can we get that kind of ambition? The Frenchman was in the middle of doing exactly that when he fell victim to one of the most horrific crashes in the history of Tour de France. During the last few moments of stage 14, Hinault was riding in pursuit of Greg LeMond when he got caught in a five-man crash. Hinault landed on his head and ended up breaking his nose, but that didn't deter him from finishing the race. He took only the essentials from the medical team present before heroically riding across the finish line with a trail of blood following him. He wanted to hold on to his yellow jersey, which he ended up keeping for the rest of the tour, despite a broken nose. Let's talk about Laurent Yalabert and the 1990 Tour de France. Even in the most savage of crashes, no one has really questioned or reimagined their place in the sport, except for Laurent Yalabert. Part of a terrible crash in the 1994 Tour de France, this cyclist began to reevaluate his life choices after being part of a traumatic moment. While it's normal to have officers covering the sidelines of the race, one of the officers really learned a valuable lesson on the day of this race. During stage two, the sprint race had riders going faster than 60 kilometers per hour and the officer in question leaned out, completely unaware of all the cyclists coming right at him. The officer panicked and jumped into the crowd to save himself when Yalabert was thrown onto the ground with his bike utterly destroyed. The French cyclist fractured his cheekbone and there was more blood than that Red Wedding episode of Game of Thrones. Yalabert eventually promised his wife he'd change his cycling choices and ended up focusing more on one-day races instead of crazy sprint finishes. And now, the Commonwealth Games crash. 
The 2022 Commonwealth Games saw a major accident during one of the cycling events at the Lee Valley Velo Park in London. The accident happened on the third day of the sporting event during the men's 15km scratch race. English rider Matt Walls was in the middle of all the major action as he, along with Canadian rider Derek G, crashed into the barriers and went straight into the crowd. Walls was hit the worst and had to be treated for 45 minutes in the stands before ultimately being taken to the hospital. Derek G and a third rider, Matthew Bostock, also ended up at the ER because of their injuries. Some of the spectators were also injured, but nothing serious enough to warrant a hospital visit. Ultimately, Canadian rider Matthias Guillemet was disqualified from the race for causing the initial crash. A total of eight riders ended up in chaos during the last lap of the race. The morning session of the cycling event was abandoned and spectators were asked to leave the velodrome so the injured could be treated properly. Let's take a look at the monster crash of Tour de France Femme. Last month, in the fifth stage of the first ever female Tour de France, a mega crash brought down dozens of riders during the 175-kilometer trip from Bar-le-Duc to saint dié de vaux You want to know the worst part? They were only 45 kilometers away from the finish line. Yikes! With 130 kilometers already covered, riders began to quicken their pace, almost brushing each other's handlebars. It was that tight. Like a single domino bringing down the rest, it only took one rider to take a large chunk of the pack with her, and those left behind ended up crashing at the back of the pile. The road was fully blocked as medics raced to the scene to treat the injured. We can't even imagine being caught up in this human pileup. Several people got hurt, including Danish cyclist Emma Norsgaard, who was immediately rushed to the hospital due to a broken collarbone. The riders who were okay quickly got up to look for the leaders and to help those in need. And finally, Johnny Hoogerland and the car. This one isn't for the faint of heart. The details from this 2011 crash will leave you feeling nauseous. Don't say we didn't warn you. While the ongoing enmity between cyclists and cars isn't anything new, you'd think that it would stay out of one of the biggest cycling events in the world, right? Well, not the case here. With 36 kilometers left in the ninth stage of the 2011 Tour de France, Johnny Hoogerland and Juan Antonio Flecha were knocked into a sharp barbed wire fence, completely sideswept by a press car that was passing by. The blood and cuts caused on Hoogerland's legs looked like something out of a horror movie, to say the least. Johnny Hoogerland managed to finish the ninth stage, despite losing a whopping 17 minutes and even ending up winning the entire tour. Guess he's got some nerves of steel, or superpowers of healing. But the terrible crash left Hoogerland with lasting back pain, mood swings, and insomnia that he has been harboring ever since the traumatic event. One would think he'd give up cycling after those sustained injuries and such a lasting impact, but Hoogerland kept up the sport until eventually retiring in 2016. That's a wrap for this video. Do you have any thoughts about these terrible cycling crashes? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.